Hi, I'm Murphy Henry, and welcome to The Murphy Method. Today, we're going to start learning how to play the banjo. But before I say anything about hand position or picks or tuning, I want to play the first tune we're going to be learning. It's called Banjo in the Holla, and it sounds like this. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> That's the first tune that we're going to be learning. Now, in preparation for learning that tune, the first thing you need to do is sit down in a chair with the banjo on your lap. You will need a strap for your banjo because the banjo is such a heavy instrument. You're going to be using both hands. You need both hands free for doing banjo things. All right. You're also going to need a set of finger picks. All right, you can see that the metal finger pick here on my index finger goes on opposite my fingernail, and you can see that the tip is bent just a little bit inward, okay? Then the thumb wears the plastic finger pick. It goes on, a, again, across your thumbnail, and it'll point down toward the strings of the banjo. All right, now that you've got your finger picks on, let's talk about the names and the numbers of the strings. The little short string at the top is the fifth string. Notice your thumb will play the fifth string and it'll pick in a downward direction. That is also a G note. So when we get to tuning, you'll have to remember that that's a G note. The next string, the fattest string on the banjo, is the fourth string and it's a D note. We're going to be hitting all these with the thumb right now, but we'll get around to talking about the index and middle fingers in just a second. The third string, also a G note. The second string is a B as in boy. And the first string is a D. Okay, now when you tune the banjo, you want to use an electronic tuner. And just to go over those strings again, this fifth one, the G note, you'll tune that to a G note on your tuner. The fourth string, you'll tune to a D. The third string, you'll tune to a G. The second string, you'll tune to a B. And the first string is another D note. All right, now that you have your banjo in tune and your picks on your fingers, let's talk about right hand position. You want to have your right forearm on the armrest of the banjo. You can see where my forearm is on the armrest of the banjo right there. You want to have your ring finger and possibly your little finger both anchored here on the head of the banjo. All right. Now I like to anchor mine as you can see from the wear spots on my banjo close to the bridge and all this stuff is for when I move my hand in different places. Okay, but I like to anchor them close to the bridge now, if you can only anchor your ring finger, that is fine. If you can only anchor your little finger, that is fine. You just have to have one of the fingers down to provide an anchor point along with that forearm on the armrest. Okay, you want to keep your fingers curled up over the strings so that when you hit the strings, there won't be a whole lot of distance. So you can see the thumb here. Picking down on the fifth string. The thumb will also pick down on the fourth string. The middle finger here, which you can hardly see because I keep them so tightly curled. I'm going to pull my fingers away so you can see. The middle finger here will pick the first string. The index finger picks the second string. And then the third string can be picked by the thumb or the index finger. So mostly the thumb on the fifth and the fourth, the middle always on the first, the index on the second or the third. Okay? 
All right, now that we've taken care of all that, we're ready to get into some real banjo playing. The first thing we're going to learn to do is play what is called a forward roll, and it sounds like this. Okay, so what's going on here? The thumb is playing the fifth string. The index is picking up on the second string, and the middle finger is picking up on the first string. So the thumb picks down, and the middle and index fingers pick up in this direction. Okay, this is the simplest roll that we can do, and when we're not fretting any of the strings with our left hand, when we're just leaving all the strings unfretted or open, we're playing in a G chord. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is just practice doing this roll over and over. Alright, this is the first time I'm going to remind you of two things. One, speed is not important when you're learning to play the banjo. And don't write any of this stuff down. As I told you earlier, this is a by ear method of learning to play the banjo. So if you start writing things down, it's just going to interfere with your learning process. So that's our deal with each other. You don't write stuff down, and I'll explain it note for note. And speed is not important. Okay. So that was our forward roll. Now let's take a look at another roll that we often use. It's called the backward roll. The backward roll sounds like this. And what those notes are, we have the middle finger picking up on the first string the index picking up on the second string, and the thumb picking down on the third string. So that was the backward roll. Now the interesting thing about the backward roll is that for the first time we used the thumb on the third string. When we did the forward roll, the thumb was playing the fifth string. Now we're bringing the thumb down to the third string. Okay, the other roll that we're going to learn here is called the square roll. And this is a four note roll that sounds like this. So we've got thumb picking the third, index picking up on the second, thumb picking the fifth, and middle picking the first. A square roll. Some people call this alternating thumb. I'll do it again. Three, two, five, one. All right, I'm just giving you very short examples of these roles. So what you want to do right now before you move along any further in this video is to turn the video off and practice these roles. You want to practice the forward roll just incessantly over and over and over and over. You want to practice your backward roll. You want to practice your square roll and don't write any of this stuff down. Okay, now that you've done that, we're going to take a look at another chord we can make on the banjo. As I mentioned earlier, when the banjo is just played open, which means you're not fretting any of the strings with the left hand, that makes a G chord. All right, now we're going to learn a very easy, simple, two-finger chord called the D7 chord. And it sounds like this. Kind of a weird sound, but there you go. So let's take a look at what the left hand is doing. And before we do that, let's just take a brief minute to talk about left hand position. Uh, you know, for making the D7 chord, which is a really easy chord, you, you don't want to be grasping the neck of the banjo like a baseball bat. Okay, it's sort of, the neck of the banjo sort of lies very loosely, you know, in that little hollow there between your thumb and index finger. But you're, you're not, you know, you don't have a choke hold on it. All right, just lies there. The thing that you don't want to do uh, is make the mistake of throwing your wrist out this way. Okay, this would be more like classical guitar position. See the banjo neck just right here, very easy. Okay, these little wires that run across the neck here are called frets. So I would be telling you how to place your fingers, and I'm going to say, put your index finger on the first fret of the second string. And when I say on the fret, I don't mean put it on the fret. I mean put it behind the fret. 
just so you can get a good clear tone. If you're on the fret, that's what it's going to sound like. So index finger on the first fret of the second string, middle finger now coming over to play the second fret of the third string. I'll move to second fret of the third string there, index finger on first fret of the second. Two fingers are down. Okay, that's the D7 chord. I'm strumming it now with my thumb. And what you want to do with this chord is you want to practice doing all those rolls we just learned. So here's the forward roll in the D7 chord. And here is the backward roll in the D7 chord. You want to remember the backward roll was the one that went one, two, three with thumb on the third. And then our last roll was the square roll. This was the one that went three, two, five, one with thumb picking the third, index picking the second, thumb on the fifth, and middle finger on the first. Alright, now that you know two chords on the banjo, the G chord and the D7 chord, a good way to practice these with the rolls is to start with your forward roll in G and then without breaking time move to your D7 chord and of course you, you want to do this really slowly so it would sound something like this D7 G Now let's do the same thing with the backward roll. The whole point of this is to practice the rolls and the chords until you feel really, really comfortable with them. I know you're dying to move on to learn banjo and the holla, but you have to go through this step first, okay? So we're going to do the backward roll first in the G, and then we're going to move to the D7. So we're one, two, three for our backward roll in G. <laughs> And now, of course, we're going to do the same thing using the square roll starting in G. That's the one that's three, two, five, one, thumb on the third, and thumb on the fifth. Here we go. Now, once you feel comfortable with the D7 chord, we're going to take up another chord, and this is called the C chord, and it looks like this. It's really hard to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to break it down for you. We've got the index finger on the first fret of the second string. We've got the ring finger on the second fret of the first string, and now we're going to reach with the middle finger all the way over to the second fret of the fourth string. Now, let me tell you right now, I know that for some of you that reach is going to be a little too much right now. So, it's okay for these exercises, and even through the song Banjo in the Hollow, if you want to not fret the fourth string. Okay? It's better to have a chord that you can use and work up to this. I have never, ever seen a student that didn't eventually learn to make the C chord this way. So, don't worry about it and don't let that stand in your way. We sometimes call this the cheating C. Okay, so in the cheat and C chord, we would do the forward roll five, two, one. Now you can see if you have your middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string, it doesn't change the sound at all. Okay, 
Same thing with the backward roll. We have the finger off, we play the one, two, three. If we put the middle finger down, does not change the sound. Same thing with the square roll, the three, two, five, one. Put the middle finger down, the roll sounds the same. All right, now let's go through our exercise of doing the three rolls using the C chord and the G chord. Now, some of you may be wondering about the making of the C chord, you know, why I put the middle finger down on the second fret of the fourth string at all. Uh, later on, of course, we will be using that second fret of the fourth string. We're just going to work up to it real easily, okay? So, we're going to do a short version of this. We're just going to do two rolls in each of the chords. So, we'll do two in G and then two in C. And we'll start with the forward roll. Here we go. And of course, you want to do that roll many, many times. I'm just giving this to you as an example. So same thing with the backward roll. We'll start in the G. C. G. And then our last roll, the square roll. Three, two, five, one. You also might want to create an exercise where you use all three chords in one of the rolls. So, for instance, you might take the forward roll and run it around G, C, and D, and back to G. It would be like this. You might want to do the same thing with the backward roll. One, two, three. And then last of all, and the most fun roll to me is the square roll. Now that you've learned your three rolls and your three chords, we're ready to take up our first song, Banjo in the Holla. Now this song will actually use all three of those rolls. And mm, while it won't exactly use the D7 chord, we'll use one finger of it. So I'm going to play it fast for you, then I'll play it slow, and then I'll break it down. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Play it slow. One, two, ready, go.
let's break it apart and see what we're doing. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn another position for a G chord. Okay, this is what we call up the neck. Okay, this area here is called up the neck, even though it kind of seems like it's down the neck. I get that. So we're going to take the middle finger and we're going to put it on the tenth fret of the second string, right there. We're going to take the index finger and put it right behind it on the ninth fret of the first string. Okay, this little two finger chord is another G chord. Okay, so in this position, we're going to do one forward roll five, two, one, five. Now, you might be asking the question at this point, but I thought the forward roll was just five, two, one. We use that in the beginning to get your hands going, but from then on, Pretty much all the rolls become four note rolls. So five, two, one, five. Then we take that G chord off and on the open strings, which means we don't have any strings fretted, we play one backward roll, which is one, two, three, one. All right, now let's put those two rolls together, the forward roll and the backward roll. Ready, go. Now we're going to come down the neck and we're going to make the C chord. You can either use the cheating C with the open fourth string or you could put your middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Okay, we're going to play the same rolls we just played up the neck, which is to say we're going to start with the forward roll, five, two, one, five. Then we're going to take the C chord up and on the open strings, we're going to play one, two, three, one, the backward roll. Okay, now let's put these two phrases together. We're going to start up the neck in our little two finger G chord, and then we'll move down the neck to our C chord, and it'll sound like this. Now, we're going to come back up the neck, and we're going to do the same thing we just did in the G chord, the forward roll, the backward roll, and that'll bring us to our ending lick. But now, I'll, before we get there, I want to put all three of these phrases together. Notice we're just consistently using first the forward roll and then the backward roll in different places. All right, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Now that brings us to our little D ending lick, which sounds like this. Okay, we're going to put the index finger on the second fret of the third string. We're going to pick it with the thumb, and then while the string is still ringing, we're going to do something that's called a pull-off, which means we're going to pull this index finger down toward the floor so we get the sound of the open third string. Earl Scruggs called this picking with the left hand. Now, if you just lift your finger up like that, you're going to kill the string. Or even if you just lift it up a little harder, it, you really are pulling the string with this finger. And often, this finger then comes to rest against the second string. It's kind of hard to see on the screen. But there, right there. So that is a pull-off, and we play that third string with a thumb. Following that note, we play the open second. Then we put the ring finger on the fourth fret of the fourth. Play that note. Open first. And then we finish up by playing the open third string, picking it with the thumb. 
That's a longer note. It's an eighth note. So it has a pause after it, and then we do a pinch of one and five. Now, a pinch, which we haven't encountered before, means playing two strings at the same time. So just take a look at the right hand. All right, the pinch playing the fifth string and the first string at the same time. Kind of hard to see, but I am playing the fifth and the first at the same time. Okay, there are other pinches, but generally speaking, when I say pinch, I mean first and fifth. So let's look at this D ending lick one more time. This is the hardest lick in the song, and you want to take it, you know, really slowly, two notes at a time, uh, in memorizing it. Okay, so it was... So especially the timing of those last two notes, the third string has a pause after it and the pinch of one and five has a pause after it. So that is the A part or the first part of the song played through one time. We're going to go back and play it again as we would when we're playing the whole song. One, two, ready, go. That brings us to the second half of the song, or the B part. Now, the B part of this song uses licks that we've already learned in a slightly rearranged order. So we're going to start here with the C chord, and we're going to play the forward roll. Then we're going to take it up and do the backward roll. Then we're going to put the C chord down again, and we're going to do the forward roll. Then we're going to take the C chord up, and we're going to play the open first string. has a long pause after it, and then we're going to pinch one and five. That also has a long pause after it. Then we're going to put the C chord down again. And do the forward roll. We're going to take it up and do the backward roll. Okay, now let's just review that again, because there's a lot going on here, and I don't want you to be writing this stuff down, okay? So even though I'm explaining it uh, fairly rapidly, you know, stop the DVD and get it a lick at a time, okay? Let's go over that again. C chord, forward roll. Take the C chord up and do the backward roll. Okay, so that's one phrase. You need to get that down. And then, we put the C chord down again and do the forward roll. Take it up, and this time, we do a open first string and a pinch of one and five. Then, we basically repeat the first phrase that we learned. Put the C chord down and do the forward roll. Take it up and do the backward roll. Then we use the same ending lick we used at the end of the A part. So that would be the B part one time through. So that was the B part played through one time. Now we're going to play the B part for the second time. One, two, ready, go. That's the whole song, Banjo and the Holla. So I'm going to put it together, all pieces, A part twice, B part twice, played, you know, kind of slowly, and then I'll play it once fast after that. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Thank you.
you're probably going to want to know how I play that ending lick. Okay. The ending lick of the song, which you play when, you've, when you're completely done with the song. You don't play it after every time. Just like you start the song, you play it five times, ten times, one time, and the ending lick comes at the very end when you want to stop. And it sounds like this. Okay, so we got the ring finger here, fifth fret of the first string. We're going to pinch that with the fifth string. That means play both those notes together. They sound the same. Index finger on second fret of the first string. Pinch that with the fifth string. Open first and fifth pinch. These are all eighth notes, so they all have pauses after them. Then we use the same ending lick we used in banjo and the holla. And there's no pinch after that. The last note you're going to hear is the third string. All right, now that you know the song and you've played it and you're starting to get a feel for it, I'm going to play it. A uh, little closer to tempo here. Now, what you're going to notice is when I play it closer to tempo, the song sort of develops what some people call a bounce or a syncopation. I don't want you to worry about that right now. Okay, that will come of its own accord where you're able to play faster and where you can able, you're able to play without thinking about your notes. Okay, so your job is just to play it as straight as possible. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> Happy to have Chris here on the guitar. Howdy, neighbors. <laughs> to, uh, to give us a little rhythm while we play banjo in the holla. We're going to start off at sort of a slow speed. We'll play it through once, and then we'll stop. Then we'll play it a little faster once, and then we'll stop. And then we'll play it somewhere close to tempo. Uh, and just a reminder that if you want a, a longer version, uh, one that you can play along with more easily, we do have that on our Slow Jam DVD. Okay, here we go, Chris. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Right, here we go. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> And there you have it. 
banjo and the holla. All right, now that you've learned how to play the tune banjo and the holla, we're going to take a look at a different technique that we use on the banjo when we are playing with other people. And this technique is called vamping. Before I say too much about the vamping, I would just like to say um, I would really much prefer that you don't work a lot with this right now, but that you move on to playing the notes of the next song. Because, as I say, this is something you use when you play with other people. It's not a very rewarding thing to add to your practice right now. Uh, having said that, vamping looks and sounds like this. We make chords with four fingers. We pick them with three fingers with the right hand, and I'll be explaining all that, but this is what it sounds like. It's played on the offbeat, so we're going like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's what vamping looks and sounds like. Now, this is just going to be a quick tutorial about this, and then I will show you the vamping to the song Banjo and the Holla. Um, if you want to know more about vamping, you can uh, take a look at our vamping DVD where I explain all this in much greater detail. Okay, short, quick version is this. This four-finger chord is called a G chord. Okay, to make this chord, we put down the index finger here on the third fret of the second string, the middle finger on the fourth fret of the third string, the ring finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string, and the little finger on the fifth fret of the first string. Okay? So all the fingers need to go down, and I'll just give you a word of advice here. Don't cheat on this. Let me, let me rephrase. Don't cheat unless absolutely necessary. Okay, because eventually you're going to need all four fingers. If, uh, if you try and try and try, it's absolutely impossible to put this ring finger down, then you just have to let it go. Okay, so this shape of fingers is actually making a G chord, but we call this arrangement of fingers the F shape because the very first chord we can make on the banjo is the F chord. So I'm going to slide this back a little bit to show you where the F chord is. We go back one fret and we get F sharp and we go back another and we get F. So that's the first chord we can make on the banjo in that shape. So F, F sharp, and G. So G is one of the chords we'll be using in um, all the songs on this DVD. G, C, and D, the big three. So there's the G chord. Now we're going to find out where the C chord is on the neck by taking this same shape and moving up one, two, three, four, five frets. Same shape of fingers, but now this is a C chord. So your anchoring strings are ring finger on the 10th fret of the 4th and little finger on 10th fret of the 1st, index on 8th fret of the 2nd, and middle on 9th fret of the 3rd. You know, that's a lot of verbiage there. Basically, you're just going to move the same shape up five frets. So there's your C chord. Luckily, the D chord is only two frets higher than the C chord, so we move up one fret to the C sharp and one other fret to the D. Same shape of fingers, but now your anchor points are the 12th fret of the 4th and the 12th fret of the 1st. Okay? G, C, and D. All right, now that we've looked at the left hand, let's take a look at what the right hand is going to be doing. Because what we do with the right hand is that we use a three-finger pinch, okay? And this three-finger pinch is going to include the first string, of course played with the middle finger, the index finger playing the second string, and the thumb coming down to the third string. I'm going to move my other fingers away so you can sort of see this. I'm now in a G vamp chord, so we go like this. first, second, and third strings. Just playing them all together, okay? Okay, so the other thing we need to know about the vamping is that this occurs on what we call the off beat. So we haven't really talked about beats because we didn't need to talk about beats. Now we'll talk just a little bit about beats. You know, you have probably somewhere in your life heard people count time one and two and three and four and. So the one 
The whole numbers are the downbeat, and the ands are the offbeat or the upbeat. And that's where you're going to play your vamp. So I've got the G vamp chord here, and I'm going to count it, and you're going to just do your three-finger pinch there with all three fingers of the right hand. So it's going to be in the G chord. One and two and three and four and. Okay? Now, if you're, um, if had experience playing the banjo or, you know, reading things online or maybe working with another teacher, some people encourage beginners to play the fourth string on the downbeat so that their vamping sounds like this. One and two and three and four and. Uh, I personally do not recommend that. In fact, I strongly don't recommend it. It's messy. It interferes with the guitar player. And I don't think... Uh, that you need to hear that in order to keep your count correct. I've never found a student that needed to hear the fourth string. So just do it in your head. One and two and three and four and. Now we're going to move up to the C chord. Anchor points at the tenth fret of the fourth and first. One and two and three and four and. Up to the D chord. Anchor points at the twelfth fret of the first and twelfth fret of the fourth. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Okay, we'll bring the guitar in in just a second, but let me tell you just a couple of other things. If you know much about bluegrass, you sometimes see people that are vamping, professional players particularly, they move this right hand from where it is positioned close to the bridge, they move it closer to the fingerboard. What this does is it mellows out the sound of the vamp one. Two, three, four, as opposed to one, two, three, four. But you've got enough to worry about right now, so don't even think about moving your hand. Just keep it where it's comfortable, uh, close to the bridge. Now let's take a look at the left hand here just for a second. I want to talk to you about one other thing that I don't want you to do, but you might have a question about it. Now if we come in... Uh, maybe a little bit closer on the left hand, I'm going to show you this thing we call dampening. So which means when I pick the three finger pinch there, see my fingers coming up? It kills the sound of the string so you don't have this ringing like this. One, two, three, four. And later on, this could be something that you could experiment with, but absolutely not right now. Okay, it's a very um, delicate, nuanced technique. And you, again, you've got enough to think about. So just plop your fingers down on the strings and vamp away with your hand close to the bridge. The only other thing I'd say about vamping is when you're playing with other people, it definitely needs to be done quietly. Quiet, a quiet vamper is a good vamper. So, you know, you don't want to be like one, two, three, four. You want to be down here, one, two, three, four. You know, a lot of times I say that vamping was invented by other bluegrass players just to shut the banjo player up. And there is a lot of truth to that. So you want to be very, uh, very quiet with your vamping. You would, in a jam session, you would be vamping all times except when you are playing your lead break. So in a jam session there's way more vamping going on than there is lead playing. So when the vocalist is singing, you're vamping. When anybody else is taking their banjo break, their banjo solo, or the mandolin or the fiddle, you are vamping. So it's one of the most useful techniques you'll learn for jamming, uh, but it's also something that you don't need to be worrying about right now. All right, we're happy to have our son Chris with us in the studio today. Chris, good to have you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a look at the vamping to banjo in the holla. But before we do that, I want you to see how the vamping fits with the guitar. You know, we talked a few minutes ago about vamping being on the offbeat. So the offbeat of the vamp corresponds with the strum of the guitar. So in bluegrass uh, guitar playing, we do the boom, chunk, boom, chunk strums. Chris, could you show them a little bit of that? So, 
his bass note is the downbeat, and his strum is the offbeat, and that's where your vamp comes. So I'm going to hold this G chord and do a little G vamping while Christopher plays the G on the guitar. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and that's good. Okay, so if you ever get lost in your vamping and you feel like you're not sure on the right, you're on the right beat, you can always refer back to the guitar and make sure your vamp is with the guitar strum. Okay, having said all that, let's take a look at the chords to the song Banjo in the Hollow. We're going to be using G, C, and D, and you know where those are on the fingerboard now. So, you know, eventually what we want to do is train your ear so you can hear chord changes, but here in the very beginning, this very first song, about the only thing you can do is memorize the chord pattern, and I'm going to tell it to you. But please, I beg of you, don't be writing this stuff down. No matter how much you think it'll help you in the short run, it will harm you in the long run. Okay, just take it slow, memorize it, work it, and then your ear and your ability to hold the chords in your head will uh, improve. So, we want to think in groups of four. So the first four beats for banjo in the holla are G, G, C, G. And then the second four are G, G, D, G. And that is the entire A part. So when you play that A part twice, you would do those patterns twice. So let's put it with the guitar. One, two, ready, go. Da 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 G, 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 D, G, then you have to start with another G right there when you come back around for the second time. So if you find yourself getting out of sync with the guitar, that might be what's happening. Okay, now unfortunately the second part of the song is a lot harder than the first part, but there you go. So <laughs> what are you going to do? It's all one beat chord. So we start out with C, G, C, G, C, G, D, G. Now, as I'm ex explaining this to you, uh, I'm using the letter note of the chord as the downbeat. So I go C, and then you play on the offbeat. G, like that. So you don't want to be putting your vamp when I'm saying the, the letter C, it comes right after it. And you'll see uh, how that works when we put it with the guitar. Okay, Chris, let's start on the second part in the C chord. Two, let me, let me get my pitch first. Got it. Two, ready, go. Da, 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 da. to play it through one more time with the A, A, and B, B together, uh, and then we'll be done with Banjo in the Hall, and you'll be ready to move on to the next song, but I would like to say, if you want to know more about vamping in more detail, don't forget about our vamping DVD. Uh, the only thing I'll just caution you about is in that DVD, we use a different shape of the G chord. Don't let that confuse you or bother you. Just continue to use your same G shape that I just taught you, which is much easier. Okay, here we go, one time through with banjo in the hollow. One, two, ready, go. Da 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 da
There you have it, Banjo in the Hollow.